In last week's khutbah, we addressed few causes, few things that lead to marriage problems between a husband and wife. And because there are so many, we will continue this khutbah on the same topic due to its importance and due to the fact that most problems the Muslim community go through are related to married life. When a husband and a wife lose affection in their relationship, it becomes very easy for them to have a fight and dispute over anything. And one thing that leads to this loss is evil or negative assumption regarding your spouse. See, in principle, we're supposed to deal with everyone, assuming the best in them and giving them the benefit of the doubt. As Muslims, we are instructed to do that. And it is a sin to do otherwise. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّ بَعْضَ الظَّنِّ إِثْمِ Indeed, some evil assumption is sin. And because we are enjoined, we are commanded by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to refrain from that. As in the book of Al-Imam Al-Bukhari, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالظَّنِّ Beware of evil assumption. But when this happens, a crack happens in the relationship. Anything said will be taken as a negative matter or justification or interpretation, whatever you want to call it. Anything done, likewise. When both spouses or one of the, the spouses starts looking and it's like a scan. Oh no, you meant this. I know this is what you really wanted. Oh, you did this. You intended this by what you did. Why go that far to break the relationship with your wife or with your husband? Umar radiallahu anhu said, when you hear a word from your Muslim brother, and you can find a good interpretation for it, don't ever think anything evil about it. Don't give it any evil interpretation. Why? Because it will break the relationship with that person. And if that person happens to be your, your husband or your wife, then you cannot afford this to happen to the relationship. We're humans, we're faulty, we make mistakes, and this is part of being human. However, some people find it difficult to live with a person who makes mistakes. Some wives or some husbands want an angel to be the spouse who doesn't make mistakes. And they will not be willing to listen to any justification. And over the smallest thing, they start blaming and accusing and arguing. And then a problem arises. There is no problem in making the mistake. There is a problem in accepting the justification from the other side. Now this is one aspect of making a mistake, continuous blame. Now on the other hand, there's another thing that results from mistakes that causes problems, is not admitting to the fault or the mistake. Some people think they would lose their dignity with their wives or their husband and their honor if, if they admit that they made a mistake. I'll give a couple of examples. Many times, the husband will be driving, 
going somewhere and he will take the wrong exit. Why? Because he refrained, he refused to stop and ask for directions, for example, or to know where the exit is, right? So he takes the, the, wrong, the, the wrong exit, and this delays them from making their uh, appointment on time. And then after that, he refused to admit that it was his fault that caused the delay on the appointment. On the other hand, the wife. Honey, where's the debit card? Where's the bank card? Oh, you were the last to use it. No, honey, you had it. No, 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 you had it. Okay, can you please look at your purse, in your purse or in your wallet, maybe? No, no, I am positive you're the one. And then she discovers that it's in the wallet, right? And then after that, in further refusal of admitting that she's at fault, or you probably were the one who put it in my wallet. Why go this far? Again, why do we have to go this far to break the relationship with the spouse? Why do we, sometimes it feels that people are in love with making problems. Again, we're humans. There is no problem in making a mistake. You are human. We are human. So admit it. Make an end to the problem right there. Yes, I'm sorry. It's my fault. End of story. Insulting your spouse, and this hurts. This really hurts. Despising or insulting the spouse in public, and especially in front of family members. This is a destructive mistake. It ruins married life. And the result of that usually is an aggressive reaction to that. And it does, and it did in many cases cause result, uh, uh, divorce, resulted in divorce. Sometimes I cannot perceive how some husbands act with their wives in public. Some sisters send me emails or WhatsApp questions, complaining about their husbands, insulting them in public, in malls, in parks, and in the house, slapping them in front of their parents, the husband's parents. Did you marry a slave? Did you take her as a slave? Even a slave, you're forbidding from doing that too. And a wife acting like a man, raising her voice on her husband in public, and humiliating him, takes the same ruling. You're not allowed to do that in Islam. This is a human being before it happen to be a husband or a wife before this bond that's between you and him or her, they happen to be Muslims and human. So they have that right of being respected, preserving their dignity. This problem has a similar scenario in front of children. When a husband or wife starts criticizing the other about something wrong that they've done. Okay, the criticism is about something that did happen, did go wrong. But don't do it in front of children. You make that parent, whether the husband or the wife, Lose the respect of their children. And then later they will lose respect for both of you. When you have a problem with your wife or your husband, regarding any matter, delay it. Take him or her to the room and, tie, and talk to them in private. Lower your voices so they cannot hear you. And try to resolve the problem calmly, in a civilized manner.
One of the uh, problems that is addressed the least and talked about the least for whatever reason is lack of intimacy in marriage. In many cases, the core reason behind divorce was this problem. When there's a lack in this relationship, when there's a shortage, a husband and a wife leaves, feel a loss of connection. A mother, the wife, a mother might be very busy with children, maintaining the house, taking care of the house, cooking, whatever, right? And what makes the problem worse, if she's a working mother, the husband comes back home, finds her a mess, he loses interest. The opposite is also correct. The husband comes back from work, beat up because of the long hours of work, depending on the type of uh, job he has. And he shows no interest to his wife. She approaches and he's as cold as ice. What happens? Your mate will feel unwanted, unloved, uncared for. This is the loss of connection. And then problems will arise. And if they're not good practicing people, it can lead one of them or both of them to something haram. This is a mutual right for both husband and wife. And it is a sin to violate this. There is a very harsh warning for women who violate this right. The Prophet wasallam said, and this is reported in the book of Imam Muslim, if a man calls his wife to bed, and she refrains. And he goes to bed. He goes to sleep. Angry with her. The angels will continue to curse her. Until the morning. Very clear religious text from the Prophet ﷺ in this regard. Sheikh Al-Uthaymeen commenting on this narration said it is haram it is a sin for a woman to do three things in this regard she's sinning if she refrains from the relationship she's sinning if she delays it without any excuse and she's sinning if she does abide but does it while she is hating it and is frowning and not showing a pleasant appearance to her husband. The husband likewise is sinning or will be sinning if he does not, if he violates this right and does not fulfill it for his wife. Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi, said, it is an obligation for the husband to fulfill this right. Because it is the most confirmed of the rights of the wife as it achieves one of the objectives of Sharia, which is preserving the chastity of the wife. Then he goes on saying, it is more confirmed than feeding the wife. Then he said, the most predominant opinion regarding the extent of that is what suffices her based on his physical ability. Being obliged to do something in Islam means that if you don't do it, you're sinning. Why? Because you'll be subjecting her to immorality. And that is a very, very dangerous sin.
فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد A widespread phenomenon amongst people in general and it becomes worse when it reaches the house and it adds insult to injury when it's between a husband and a wife. Smart devices being stuck to the hand as if it has super glue on the hand. Many husbands and mainly wives complain about the husband being there and not being there. He's physically present, but he's absent-minded. He's sitting with her, but he's not with her. Why? He's got that phone in his hand. And some have a, a laptop. The spouse will not feel appreciated, cared for. You don't want to listen to her. You don't want to talk to her. You don't want to be with her or him. When this happens, at times, they'll set a time. They'll allocate a time for them to sit together. Right? And then what happens? They sit. She either brings coffee or tea or whatever, right? And as soon as they sit, he takes his phone out. WhatsApp, Facebook, etc., etc., right? And sometimes she does the same. So there will be two bodies sitting right next to each other or facing each other, know nothing about one another. And they might sit like this for an hour or two and they'll drink the tea and the cake or whatever it is that they have, right? And the time finishes and then they will leave having spoken to their phones and not a word to one another. This makes a person feel that he's sitting with a wall, with an object, not someone who's supposed to have love, affection in their hearts towards them, expresses that, whether him or her, to his or her mate. Many couples, especially newly married ones, wrongfully believe that once they decide they want children, it'll happen when and how they want it to. However, in a lot of cases they're struck with reality. Unfortunately, they can't. It is delayed or they're prevented. Deprived totally. And they go into chaos. They don't know how to deal with it. They be become frustrated and devastated. And take it on one another. You're the reason? No, you're the reason. They start accusing one another. A simple way to get out of this is to remember that it is something that is in the hands of Allah. Only. Allah says that in the Quran. He gives whom he wills female children. And he gives whom he wills males. Or he bestows both female and male children. And he makes whom he wills, barren, infertile, cannot produce. When we remember this, when we deal with this problem in this manner, we will be content. Yes, utilize the means. There is no problem. But that's the end of it. Remember that. As a human being, this is all you can do.
as a husband and wife. And it's not any, anyone's fault in this case. It is a pure decree from Allah Azza wa Jal based on His wisdom, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Lack of domestic skills. You see, while girls are encouraged to become future doctors, engineers, pharmacists, what have you, in some homes, little to no emphasis is given to domestic skills. And therefore, the girl goes into married life Clear, clean, doesn't know much on home management. You see, while Islam does not prevent women from working when there's a need, and while adhering to Islamic Sharia, yet the main role and mission of a woman is to manage her home and upbring her children. And if she lacks in this, then she is lacking in the major role she's supposed to play in the community. Many husbands become frustrated. They come home and the home is a mess. Children are a mess. There is no food. Honey, let's order or let's eat out. Okay, some husbands can, but they can't do this perpetually. So the duty of the wife is to learn very fast to remember before that that this is her role these are her responsibilities so she needs to learn fast and this usually begins uh, yani takes takes place in the beginning of the the uh, married life and the role of the husband in this situation is to be patient because this takes this takes time for her to master it or to do it the way you like it because in some cases they have some skills but they're not like the skills he saw his mom practicing right an important role here is on the shoulders of the father and the mother of that girl before they send their girls into this relationship Please do train them, prepare them to shoulder this responsibility so, so they don't face problems in the future. And the last point I would like to address is, might appear as superficial or unfair, but it's a reality and it is a cause of many uh, marriage problems is the change of appearance, mainly of women, but also in some cases for men. M many people, many men fantasize to have the wife they married today or 20 years ago to remain having the same shape and looks after 20, 30, 15, whatever years. Well, you need to wake up. Because as time goes on, she grows older. And the most common problem is gaining weight. Well, when she has to produce your children, one, two, three, four, five, and in some, mashallah, in some couples they have 10 and 13 and 15 children, how do you expect that body to remain the same? It is unfair to deal with her as if she was the 18 or 20 year old girl you took from her parents' house. It's simply unfair and it is simply unrealistic. One way to, to deal with this is to remember that the bond between you and your wife is not a physical bond only. There is much more to married life than that. Real love comes to practice in such situations. 
when you remember that you'll still attached to her soul, love her heart, interested in her personality and character, when you remember and remind yourself that you love her for who she is and not how she looks, you'll overcome this. The same goes to women. You're not going to have the same husband with the six pack that you took when he was 20 years old. He's going to have a belly. And his face is going to wrinkle. And he's going to grow gray hair. So live with this and remember, he's been your mate for so long. He's been your loving, caring, providing husband, the father of your children for so many years. Appreciate that in your relationship, both of you, and you can overcome this problem very easily. These were some major serious problems or causes of problems I wanted to address because they're widespread amongst couples. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us all live in harmony with our spouses. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma khfirli al-muslimina wal-muslimat wal-mu'minina wal-mu'minat al-ahya'i minhum wal-amwa.